Welcome to the Rugged Podcast. This is your pack a day voiced MC getting you ready for the next episode. Let's turn it over to our hosts, TJ Tucker and Cody Pritchett. When life gets rugged, we're right there with you. Well, here we go on the Rugged Podcast talking about anxiety. There's a couple things that are giving me and Tuck anxiety right now. There's some dogs barking in the background at his place. The air's coming on in my house. How you doing today, bro? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm living proof right now of the uh, the physical symptoms of anxiety. So yeah, we could definitely talk about those pretty easily right now from a first person perspective, right? Oh, that's right, man. Anxiety is live and well right now in our lives, in the world. So we're excited to talk about it today. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, for me, a lot of times anxiety comes from really wanting everything to be perfect. You know, when it's not, whether it's me, I'm trying to be perfect in something or something else that I'm working on, wanting it to be perfect. And that realization that, oh, wait, I'm not perfect. So that causes all kinds of tension and anxiety. And then maybe the project I'm working on, whether it's this episode or something else, I'm like, I got to figure out what to do with this tension that I feel in my body when it's just not perfect, you know? Oh yeah, me too. I mean, even coming into this episode today, I was just thinking, man, I'm not enough. And the kind of fear and insecurity that comes along with making an episode on anxiety. So I think that's a good place to start. You're the licensed therapist with a beautiful face and a non-radio voice. (laughs) Why don't you kick us off with some of the things that you've experienced with anxiety in the counseling room? Yeah, yeah. And really one of the reasons I wanted to become a counselor in the first place is because before I became one, I have a friend who at that time was really struggling bad with anxiety, has all kinds of symptoms. They're just torture. And so he was telling me about them and just how miserable he was. And I really had no way to help him. And I felt, uh, man, I want to be able to do something. So that's, that was one of the situations that caused me to think, well, maybe I could get some training in this. And, and that, that was one of the things that sent me down the journey of learning about anxiety and all the other stuff that tries to hold us back. Yeah, man, totally. And I have my own journey with anxiety that started in college and sounded a lot like deep insecurity that I really didn't know what to do with thoughts and fears So we all have some kind of story with anxiety. What about you, bro? Have you interacted with anxiety personally? I have. And what I found is that most people kind of lean one way or another towards anxiety or towards depression. And I definitely am one that that would lean more toward anxiety when I struggle. And yeah, it's, it's something you really do feel in the body. And usually I'll feel it and not even know that I'm feeling it, if that makes any sense. And then Mm -hmm. if I take enough time to kind of figure out, all right, what's something's tense in me, whether it's my chest muscles or maybe my scalp feels tight. If I slow down enough to notice that, then I can start to figure out, all right, what's causing those physical symptoms? What, what thoughts are maybe happening or what's going on around me in life that is kind of putting me into this I don't know, maybe flexed mode that Mm -hmm. that anxiety sometimes feels like. Yeah. Anxiety has those physical symptoms. I was driving home last night talking to my wife on the phone and she said, I'm anxious. And I asked her, where are you feeling it in your body? And for her, it was her jaw and Mm -hmm. her head, like a headache. Mm -hmm. And I guess she had these physical symptoms with emotional and mental things coming along with it. And then I turned around and told her, I'm feeling anxious. And she asked me, where are you feeling it in your body? And like you just said, bro, it was in my chest. Mm -hmm. Um, I always feel it in my chest, like, like a weight on my chest. And there's messages that come along with that, but there's bodily sensations that go along with anxiety. Yeah, that idea of the mind and the body being connected where you can really feel it physically somewhere in the body is is really crucial to getting rid of the anxiety. Because what I tell people is anxiety and other stuff too, but anxiety is like a check engine light. And it's just trying to give us a message saying like, hey, check underneath the hood because something needs attention. The sad part is, or the, the not so fun part is that physical stuff that we feel in our bodies is really uncomfortable and we want to get rid of it quickly. 
But that's the whole point. The check engine light, so to speak, in our body wants to make us uncomfortable so that we'll pay attention and kind of knock us out of the the rhythm that we've been in, probably ignoring whatever it is that's causing the problem at the root. Yeah. So it's our bodies are speaking to us. Anxiety is knocking on the door saying, do something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I, I used to try to look at anxiety as an enemy, right? And I use that metaphor with clients and it was somewhat helpful because there is a sense in which you do want to get rid of it. But what I found is the more I treated it as an enemy, both personally and in sessions, the more I treated it as an enemy and really like geared up to let's fight this thing, let's go bring the battle with that kind of mentality, it actually sometimes made the anxiety worse because Mm -hmm. it's kind of like a crying baby. You know, you can do everything in the world to try to get that baby to stop crying. You know, you could ignore it, probably not going to stop crying. You could try to tell it to shush, you know, <laughs> you could say, please stop crying. But until you actually give the the attention it needs and meet the needs that it's crying about, that crying is just going to keep happening. So our bodies are the same way. If, if we fight against those physical symptoms, chances are they're just going to intensify because we're not really getting to the root of the need. Wow. That's such a good picture of anxiety as a crying baby that needs attention. As you were saying that, another picture that came to my mind was like a bird that's caught in a net. And as long as that bird is struggling and fighting against that net to try to get out of the net, it's not going to get out of the net. But if it will just slow down, pay attention to the net and what it is doing, then it can free itself from the net. Hmm. And that's anxiety is fluttering, trying with all of our might and all of our energy to figure out what's going wrong with us when we might just need to pay attention, slow down, be compassionate to ourselves, maybe even get some help to get through whatever is causing this discomfort, this turmoil, uh, like you were talking about, Tuck. And yeah, Cody, what you talked about with the idea of giving yourself some compassion I have to tell myself all the time, like, hey, just go easy on yourself, Tuck, because like this is <laughs> this is not how you would treat a friend. Yeah, Cody, that idea of giving yourself some compassion, that doesn't come easily to me. And I would say it probably doesn't come easily to most people. I'm all the time having to remind myself and remind clients that, hey, go easy on yourself. Cause you probably wouldn't beat somebody up for struggling, just like you're probably beating yourself up for struggling. And just like I was saying about fighting the anxiety, if we start beating ourselves up for maybe not getting over it fast enough or like, oh no, I might need help, something along that line, that's only going to make things worse too. Yeah. There's the old adage, love yourself as you love others. But what if, what if you could flip that a little bit and say, love others? Oh, hold on. Let me, let me start that over. Yeah, Tuck, there's the old adage, love yourself, or I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to love myself right now. Like, <laughs> I'm going to be patient with myself like I would be with others right now. <laughs> so there's that old adage that says, love others like you love yourself. But, but what if we flipped it and said, love yourself as you love others? Because some of us treat others better than we even treat our own selves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it happens a lot when there's maybe a high achieving personality type, like I was saying earlier, that that drive for perfection. And that can be a strength, but so often a strength can also have its downside, a weak side. So yeah, that that quest for let's get over this quickly, let's solve this problem quickly. And if we don't, then shoot, what does that mean about us? Oh no, you know, am I am I weak? Am I not good enough, all those thoughts fall under anxiety. So this is the first episode in our series on anxiety. And today we defined it and talked about some of the ways it shows up. And next time, we'll figure out why it happens in the first place and then talk through a lot of different solutions so you can get free from it. You know, we keep these episodes short. So hopefully right now you've like finished brushing your teeth and putting on your socks in the time it took to listen. And we sure would appreciate it if you could leave a review and subscribe. 
Thanks so much. And here is our MC with the smoker's voice to take us out of here. If you found this episode helpful, please leave a review and subscribe. It'll help get this out to help more people. Thank you. That's all for this episode. Until next time, keep it rugged.